lot of revenue. It will, the revenue we are wasting using foreign airlines will be will be recovered. And also, flight, yeah, go ahead. do you see this move by Mr. President as a way of consolidating our recent election uh, into the United Nations Security Council? It could be because I said that Israel is a silent superpower. But I don't think that will be the main reason to, because I'm always one of those people who say, we need to democratize the United Nations. Hmm. We don't need Nigeria to become a permanent member in a non-democratic system. And our president has made a, a very good case. And because our president made a good case, that's why they try to, you know when a child is crying and saying the truth, a child some, sometimes gives me a sweet to shut up his mouth. <laughs> I think that Nigeria wouldn't have accepted that uh, non-permanent member uh, uh, position no, as, yeah. as, as, as uh, Saudi Arabia refused. So that we democratize the United Nations. Because when it was formed in 1945, mm -hmm. most countries were not, were not, uh, were not independent. And the, the world has changed. The population dynamics have changed. The, even the, 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 the wealth of the world has moved away from the West to, mm -hmm. to, e to East and even to Africa. Mm -hmm. So why should Africans who are almost the majority in the, in, the, in the United Nations, because we have over 30% of the United, United Nations membership, mm -hmm. have no, no, no representation in the, on, the permanent, uh, uh, on the permanent council, the yes, permanent security council. Why shouldn't that be democratized? So that and we are the Africa, imagined economies. Exactly. So if Africa has 30%, more than 30% of, of, of the nations that are represented on the United, on the United Nations, why can't we have about 30% of um, uh, um, a permanent member a representation. I want the United Nations uh, Security Council to be rotational, to be based on, on, on the election. These four years, four uh, nations will come, will converse and be elected by other nations, and they will be there for four years. Another time, other nations, whether it's a small nation or a big nation, sure. so that there will be democracy. You cannot be conversing for democracy around the world. And then you keep institutions that are not democratic and use them to, as uh, imperial tools to submerge and to forset other nations' uh, 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 rise and things like that. Thank you very much. Would mean reviewing the recent visits of Mr. President to the state of Israel as being Mr. Basil Odilin and Webera, a management consultant and, of course, a foreign affairs analyst. Thank you for, for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. And up next is Media Review with Anita OKDG. Don't go away. <laughs> Talking has been there for years now. Do you have proofs? What proofs? Can you prove it? What I'm saying is that you do not understand. Facts are sacred. Truth always prevails. No falsehood. Putting records straight. No foul language. No manipulations. No fabrications. No scapegoating. Insight showing every Friday, 9 to 10 a.m. on the network service of the NTA. Join us. Today I'm joined on this segment by one-time national president of the Nigerian Union of Journalists. Malam Sani Zoro. He'll be sharing with us his views on a few of the major issues that have come up in the media in the course of the week. Malam Zoro, you're welcome on Insight. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. How's okay. life been? Yeah, it's okay. We're trying. Great. Okay, now straight to business. One of the major yes. issues which has come up in the print, electronic, and online media during the course of the week right. has been the alleged purchase of armored vehicles, vehicles by Laudua, the Minister of Aviation. Do wow. you think that, um, what do you think or what, what would you say that the media has been, would you say the media has been thorough and balanced in its coverage of this incident? Well, first of all, I want to say that um, the media had been making a fist out of this controversy okay. because, uh, let me say, um, in the last two weeks since it erupted. And uh, surprisingly, I cannot even see when the media is likely to dump this for another issue because we need to understand how the media works whatever is topical is what the media will use okay. and of course for the very uh, for the very obvious reasons first of all it will enable it to sell its product the more the issue is in the public sphere the more it is in public consciousness the more people will want to know about it because don't forget the media the media major product is just information, it's news. Now, in this particular case, 
um, so many angles have been explored by the media. The latest one I have seen this morning is, is, is the confession or the, um, the testimony of the managing director of FAN, if the papers are to be believed, in which he also said he or his own organization also bought four more armored cars you know, uh -huh. on the instruction of the of the honourable minister. I read about that too. But Good. Then so that is an ongoing story. It means it's an ongoing story. Yeah. So many things, you know, are unraveling. So many things are evolving, uh, which means that the media or well, this issue, this controversy, will continue to dominate the headlines, and then in the social media, it will also be a subject of major engagement. Some women have also come up to say that um, that the media should not criticize or crucify Stella Odua before trial. Do you think that the media has been crucifying Stella Odua in this situation? Well, you see, the media is basically a for people also to generate views and also for people to join in the debate. It is a platform for anybody to express his own opinion. So if there are gender groups that think the media should probably not criticize the honorable minister, because she is a lady, then they will join in the point. But the media should not suppress as unpopular as such views could be at this point in time. The media is obligated to allow all opinions, all views to be expressed freely. Any medium that suppresses any view, no matter how unpopular it is, is committing an unethical practice. That is one. Okay. Secondly, um, I also want to say that we have to understand that the media in such uh, times of crisis or heavy controversies of this nature is also vulnerable. It is susceptible to manipulations by those who have interest in the media. So, for instance, those who will want um, the minister to be sacked, as some people are conversing, will also want to utilize the media. They will want to fit the media with a lot of information which will be correct and which are also not necessarily correct. Then her own supporters also, or her minders, will also use the media. That's the only platform available to you. So it is important for the reading public also to be able to read between the lines. And in this particular case, I want to say, any story credited to unnamed sources, reliable sources and so on, not only in the context of this particular running story, the controversy about the minister, the aviation industry, and so on. Any story for that matter, there is a need to be critical. Why is that story not credited to somebody in government or anywhere else? Talking about being critical and also talking about reading in between the lines, right. there's also another important issue that I would like us to discuss. On Tuesday, the Daily Trust newspaper came up with a story that, um, that the governor of the Niger state has pulled out of the G7 or is pulling out of the G7. Right. On Wednesday, Daily Sun came up with another contradictory report saying that the Niger state governor is debunking and denying this report. So talking about reading in between the lines and also being critical, do you think how, as a, as a professional, as a media professional and, a, and media expert, how way. appropriate is it for a national newspaper to come up or publish a story without confirming from the direct source or the subject in question? Well, I have a question largely the following day that was yesterday. I think on page two, okay. they explained the sources of that story and they said they stood by their story. But um, quite frankly, um, with due respect you know, to the professionals there, uh, at the newspaper you have talked about, if I were the one casting that headline, all I needed to do was to add a question mark. Governor Babangida Aliu pulls out of new PDP? That could have settled it because the media is entitled to speculate. The media has a right to speculate based on the information that it has. At any rate, they have, stayed, they have stated they have stood. They have also named their own source. I only hope, and I'm happy, you see, these controversies help to enrich, you see, the debate. And it also helps to enrich media laws themselves, mm -hmm. communication laws, so that we will now know whether people can actually sue for damages. We will also know, more importantly, who is telling a lie 
and who is actually telling the truth okay. or what brought about this controversy. Okay. So this thing itself has opened another vista, you know, for people to understand whether the government so quoted actually was in fact, you know, talking from the position of uh, okay. truth or not. Yeah. Okay, because of time, we'll take one last um, um, topical issue, which, um, okay, this is actually the controversy around um, Governor Shomali and Yam. Um, at, at, a meeting, at a council meeting of state earlier this year, it was reported by the media that the Edo State Governor right. and the Attorney General of Federation, Mohamed um, Bello Aduke, yes. had, had a shouting match. Now, on Monday this week also, there was another shouting match between Governor Shomali and also and, um, Yam. And Yam. Yeah. So, what, 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 what do you think of all this? What, 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 what do you think of this sort of public display of disagreement by our politicians? Mm. Well, the fact of the matter is that it's not only in Nigeria that um, public, uh, I mean, disagreements are, done, are conducted in this manner. In some territories, even advanced countries like Japan, Korea, and so on, we have also seen on television how chairs, you know, were thrown at each other, you know, how some, you know, um, uh, there, were, there, were, there, there, were, there were fights in parliament, there are disagreements, shouting matches and so on. I in as much as we are not encouraging that actually, but you cannot avoid it because the of politicians, they are always charged. And the environment for conducive intercourse. Okay, so do you think that, okay, there was also an apology letter sent to the the, from the gov um, from the national committee to the governor, right. do you think that these are the these are the next step to take? Oh yeah, sure. But the most important thing is that the media has reported it accurately. But in the event anybody thinks probably the media was one-sided in its reporting, that's why it will affect us in the community. The most important thing, the lessons to be drawn in these cases is whether the media has been able to report factually. That is our concern. Thank you. But you cannot stop politicians from quarreling because it's part of their trade. Thank that you. is part of it. Thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you very much, Madam Zero. It's been great having you here. Thank you. Um, you've made important contributions and we hope to have you. Please keep it up because this is a very important mechanism of bringing the press to accountability. It's very, very important for readers also to know what they are buying. Just like the Nigerian media, or any medium itself can be criticized. This is one way of bringing media men and their institutions to account. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. This thing we are talking about been for years now. Do you have proofs? What proofs? Can you prove it? What I'm saying is that you do not understand. Facts are sacred. Truth always prevails. No falsehood, putting records straight. No foul language, no manipulations, no fabrications, no scapegoating. Insight, showing every 9 to 10 a.m. on the network source of the MTA. Join us. With that media review, we have come to the end of the maiden edition of Insight. From all of us from the studio, thank you for being part of the program and do enjoy your weekend. Any talk. It's really been a pleasure to have you join us this week. I'll see you again, same time, next week on Insight. I am Eni Ito, Okediji. And from me, Femi Adifila. Thank you very much. Bye.